This is Chesapeake Motorworks, and today we'll be going over the STM32 code that was controlling the E46 instrument cluster. I'll be making this code available on GitHub so you can follow along. As you can probably tell, this is my first program on the STM32, so it's called Hello World, and it was running on a board commonly referred to as a blue pill that uses an STM32 F103 C8 chip. Over here we have our code, and most of this is boilerplate that was generated by a tool called STM32 CubeMX. Inside of CubeMX, you tell it which STM32 you are currently using, which in this case is the F103 C8, and the features that you would like to use. So for us, it's going to be one CAN channel and one I2C channel. It then generates this boilerplate code where you can get started. Now take note, you can see there are sections in here that say user code begin, user code end. You want to put all your code in between these comments so that if you were to modify something in STM32 cube MX, it will not overwrite your uh, custom code and it knows where it can write its own code. So here we have some private type definitions. These um, allow us to use the CAN bus. So we have a receive header address, a transmit header, we have a empty receive buffer. We have a filter so we can filter out any extraneous messages and we have a mailbox. Coming further down, we have two handlers, one for CAN bus, one for I2C. Further down, we set up our ADS1115, which is a four channel analog to digital converter that uses I2C. And in our case, it's communicating on I2C address hex 48. We set up a couple arrays that we can store values for the X and Y channels coming from that joystick you saw in the video. And then we have a constant that allows us to convert the digital value received from the analog to digital converter to an actual voltage. We come down here to the main entry point in the program. And to begin with, most of this is just set up. So we set up our CAN, we set up our I2C bus, GPIO, which isn't really used here. And we go ahead and set up our CAN bus sender ID to hex 30. This is um, import, importing the CAN filter. And then we start the CAN bus right here. After all this, we go ahead and we enter our main loop which is nicely commented by CubeMX as an infinite loop. So we come down to our user code section, and the first thing we do is set up a status LED. So this is going to turn the status LED on. That's what the GPIO pin set is, and the only thing that GPIO code up there above is being used for. And every 10 iterations of this code, it's going to execute this. And this is because we have a counter that's incremented each time this loop runs. And then we mod that by 10, so every time it's equal to zero, it goes ahead and sets the LED to turn on. At the very bottom of this, we go ahead and turn it back off, and that's how it flashes. Here we have a for loop that runs twice, and this is for the analog to digital converter. It runs once for each channel you want to acquire data from. In our case, even though it's a four channel analog to digital converter, we're only using two channels because we're only reading the X and the Y axis from that joystick. So we run this loop twice. Then we use the switch case statement to iterate in between each channel. So X and Y. We come down here. We send the data to the ADS. We go ahead and we wait 20 milliseconds in this case. We get a reading back, do some basic processing to it, and store the voltage value into the array that was set up above. Now that we're outside of the ADS loop and have received the readings from the joystick, we're ready to construct our CAN messages. So we start out with an empty transmit buffer that's been populated with all zeros. And we start to look at the CAN messages that we're interested in sending. All of these definitions came from ms4x.net. And the first message that we're interested in is message ID 316. We're interested in a few bytes, namely byte 0, bytes 2 and 3 for the tachometer. And we come down here, and we set our transmit header 
to indicate that we want to send to address 316. We go ahead and we set byte 0 to 0x0x0d, 0 0 x 0 which means that the ignition is on and there are no errors. This helps uh, wake up the instrument cluster so that we can actually see the data that we're sending. Then we go ahead and we reference our voltage reading for the first index, and we convert this into a engine speed that can be displayed on the instrument cluster. Finally, we go ahead and send this message over to the instrument cluster itself. We move on to the next CAN message, which is going to be CAN message ID 329, and we need to set byte 0, which is the CAN bus function level, and it's always set to hex 11 for the MS-43 ECUs that are used in later model E46s. Byte 1 is for the coolant temperature, and that can be derived through the formula over here. So we take our voltage reading, and we convert it into a temperature value that might be seen in a running car, so that we can see activity on that display as we move the joystick around. Bytes 2 and 3 I think are less important. Byte 3, I believe, may wake up the tachometer as it indicates the engine is running, and byte 2 is just set to a default value for ambient pressure. We construct this CAM message and then go ahead and send it over to the cluster as well. Finally, we come on to message ID 545, which we're really not using, although I was messing with oil temperature, so byte 4 is filled out. You can see that right here. And then we go ahead and send that off to the instrument cluster. Finally, this is where we uh, set the, um, where we unset the status LED so that it flashes. So again, we check to see if the counter is modded by 10. If it is, we toggle it, which because it was turned to one above, turns it back off. We increment our counter, and then we have a 10 millisecond delay before we go back to the top of the loop and repeat the process all over again. That's pretty much all there is to it. The rest of this is pretty much boilerplate code coming from CubeMX. Um, again, I will put this up on GitHub so you can follow along, and it should be a pretty fun way to get started with some of this.